Agricultural products like grain had previously been moved on the railroad by way of boxcars. Paper, cardboard, or wooden doors would be placed behind the main door to prevent the product from spilling out. It would then be unloaded by letting it pour out the sides, scooping it out, or using a car tipper. But by the 1960s and 70s, most American railroads were switching over to steel-built covered hoppers to transport agricultural products. They were larger in size to carry more of a product, and easier to unload using chutes located at the bottom of the car. Though in Canada, Canadian National and Canadian Pacific were a bit late to a full switch over to hoppers. The Government of Canada in 1972 had started supplying cylindrical covered hopper cars to replace the aging 40-foot 1940s and 50s built grain box cars on CN and CP Rail's fleet. Despite that, both railways still had a sizable fleet of grain cars in the thousands. Both railways underwent government-funded rehabilitation programs for their grain box cars starting in the mid-1970s to remedy issues regarding rusting, door repairs, and flooring. As part of this refurbishment too, a Wii icon, first used on the government hoppers, was stenciled on. Many of these rehabilitated box cars though, still had their Steam Era logos and markings. All of this was still more of a temporary fix, as these repairs were only to extend a car's life by another five years. The main reason for this program was that it was cheaper to repair these boxcars for use on lightweight branch lines rather than upgrading the track infrastructure to support the weight of the heavier hoppers. With that said, throughout the 1970s and 80s, CN and CP Rail sent their grain boxcars to locations and ports like Thunder Bay, Ontario, Vancouver, British Columbia, and Churchill, Manitoba. In 1986, CN refurbished and converted some 1950s era newsprint boxcars for grain service exclusively at Thunder Bay and Churchill. The financial cost was split between the Canadian federal government and Manitoba government. Both government logos appeared on the cars, notably the Manitoba Buffalo, giving these cars the nickname of Buffalo Cars. Also, from 1986 till 1988, CN experienced a shortage of grain boxcars and had to borrow from CP Rail. The fact that CN didn't fully load hoppers sent onto branch lines didn't help the inability to fully move shipments through the ports either. As the 1980s transitioned into the 90s, both Canadian railways continued downsizing their fleet of grain box cars and sent them off for scrapping. CP Rail, for example, was down to 209 cars in 1993. CN, as late as 1994, was suspected of creating artificial shortages of their Churchill-bound boxcars, supposedly sending them off to isolated sidings. This was possibly done to charge customers more money to move their crops, as there would be more of a demand for boxcars with a shortage. The Hudson Bay Route Association placed a wanted ad in a newspaper to try and find the missing cars. Regardless, the late 1990s would mark the end of Canada's grain boxcars. They were pretty clapped out at this point, sometimes leaking grain on the way to the port. CP Rail ceased grain boxcar shipments by July 1996, and CN sent out their last Buffalo boxcars that December. In 1997, CN started sending hoppers across lines like the Herkmer subdivision bound for Churchill. It was previously thought that harmonic oscillations would cause hoppers to derail on the line, but this was disproven during tests in 1995 and 96. From there on out, CN and CP Rail's grain box cars would be scrapped, and Canada's prairies would now see covered hoppers shipping their grain out across the world. Ports like Churchill have now seen a change of hand since the CN days, the Hudson Bay Railway now owning the line, still seeing limited grain service among other trains. Canada's biggest railways managed to hold on to an old tradition for quite some time compared to their American counterparts, but change had to happen eventually. Weathered steam-era box cars gave way to colorful hoppers. But even then, those colorful cylindrical hoppers are being replaced with more modern designs. Regardless, Canada's grain box cars remain a unique piece of Canadian railway history.